All right, so getting into a really exciting topic, which is manipulating data in R. Um, I think this is really cool and super uh, exciting, kind of bringing together a lot of the things that we've talked about so far um, in the class. All right, uh, so let's recap a little bit of data cleaning. Uh, we talked about removing NAs from your data. So often this is an important cleaning step. Removing NAs is really, um, you know, something that we might run into quite a lot. And so there's a couple of functions that can help you do that. You can, of course, look for is NA in any vector. You can check if there are any NAs. You can do uh, one of those count tables. It will tell you how many NAs are in a specific column or category. Um, and then functions from packages like Naniar, uh, this ggmisvar will create a really nice plot to determine if you have NAs. Filter automatically removes your NAs, um, so you'll need to tell it if you want to keep them. Drop NA can help you remove NAs from a specific column. You know, I've got a, a, a column for heart rate and I want to drop NAs of that particular column, drop NA of heart rate, for example, uh, will help you remove NAs from that uh, particular column. And just things to keep in mind, you know, we're not telling you exactly, you know, you always want to do it this way for your data. Of course, you're going to have to bring your subject area expertise in and think about what those NA values represent because having those can change your calculation results. And so you want to pay attention to you know, what those NAs mean. Are they meaningful um, or are they just missing, you know, and, and something you can exclude? So always be thinking about that with your data. A couple of things we can do to clean up the text or, or the numbers in our data. So Recode can help with simple recoding. So if you just know that um, capital M should be male, I think that was one of our examples from lecture, you can do that specific case. Um, but maybe there's a couple of different cases where you want uh, to recode um, several values. You can use case when to do that quickly and not have to write every single um, particular case out. Uh, Stringer has some great functions for looking at specific parts of values. Um, so you can replace specific text in your in your values in your particular column. And um, separate and unite are really nice for splitting up columns and then likewise combining them back together. So there may be some cases where you have stuff that's kind of strung together in one one nice uh, long and, and uh, detailed description in a column, but maybe you want to split that up and do um, some some more granular work on it. And so there's a lot of uh, definitely a lot of cleaning concepts here. So we uh, definitely suggest you check out the cheat sheet if there's anything you're um, not remembering or want clarification on. All right, so what is manipulating data? It seems like kind of that's what we've been doing so far, but specifically in this module, we're gonna talk about uh, just like kind of changing the shape of the data and combining data. So we'll talk about reshaping data from wide format to long format, and I'll explain what those are in just a second. Um, and then doing the reverse, we'll reshape the data from long to wide format. And then we'll take a break and do some lab work. And then finally, we'll get to merging data or performing joins. And so this is really powerful for combining different data sets that you might have or, or might be generating. OK, so what is wide slash long data? What's, what's the difference here? And I think uh, sometimes it's nice to actually just visualize this. And so uh, what we have here is wide data, and here it's being stretched out into long format. And you see here I have two IDs and a couple of different uh, variables and descriptions of those IDs. And then they're being stretched uh, long so that what is uh, the 
variable name actually becomes the contents of another column. So I'll talk more about this in just a second uh, and we'll, we'll take a deeper look at it because I know this is kind of a tricky concept. Okay, so importantly, the data is not changing, right? Data is just stored differently um, in your data frame or your tibble. And so for wide data, it's gonna have many columns, okay? It's gonna be nice and stretched out. So you might uh, imagine a really simple uh, data frame or really simple tibble that we have here. Uh, we've got a column for state, and then we've got a couple of uh, months of different vaccination rates. Okay, and it's kind of going reverse chronological here. So June, May, and then April. And uh, I've got many different columns of, of numeric data here. So in this case, it's a percent um, and just one row for the particular um, observation or ID that I'm interested in. And so this is wide format, it's got many columns, but then for long format, those column names actually become the data itself. So if I stretch this into long format, I now have several lines with the same ID, this Alabama, um, and then these column names, they were previously column names, they actually come to fill this column in uh, that we're calling name, okay? And those values are uh, stretched accordingly. So you can see that all of the contents here is still the same, it's just in a different format. Okay, and so when we have multiple, um, you know, we have multiple columns per individual in the wide format. Again, values are spread across multiple columns. In this case, now I have multiple different IDs. Same principle applies. These columns up here are becoming the contents of this new name column, and the values that are kind of within the, uh, the tibble um, are becoming this value column. Okay, and you can see the numbers are exactly the same, right? The numbers are not changing. Um, and then um, kind of key um, thing to point out, though, in long format, you're repeating that ID multiple times, okay? Okay, so at its most essential, data is wide or long with respect to certain variables, right? It's, so it's a description of your data um, and how it looks rather than the contents itself, okay? And so just looking at this, another, we got another example. If we have patient, on, uh, patient ID on the, uh, the, for the rows here, and then different day observations um, for our variables, and we convert that to long format. We're repeating the ID and taking the day into its own column and the value uh, into its own column. Okay, so you may be asking like, why are we bothering with this? Why, why is this important if the data is actually the same? Um, so wide, I think this is a little easier for me to read, right? There's not a lot of repeated text, right? I don't see Alabama multiple times. I can kind of easily assess, you know, the column I'm interested in and go straight to the number, right? You, you, you find the ID, you find the column, and then you find the intersection, right? So it's a little easier for humans to read. And a lot of the data we collect is, is gonna be kind of in this format, um, but Long format is easier for R to make plots, to do analysis, uh, things like that. So it's important that we can do both and we can convert back and forth. Sometimes it's required for cleaning our data. We'll see an example of that um, in a little bit. Okay. All right. So how do we actually implement this in R? Uh, so we'll be doing this pivoting using the tidier package okay and so this comes with tidyverse um, but you may need to do um, like a library uh, tidier if you haven't um, loaded it in tidyverse and so tidier allows you to tidy your data we'll talk about pivot longer which is a function that 
makes multiple columns into variables. So it's doing this um, wide to long. So here to here with pivot longer, pretty straightforward. Pivot wider will do the opposite, do the reverse, making a variable into multiple columns, like stretching it out nice and wide. And then uh, we'll also review separate. Okay, so this will be an example of how pivot longer and pivot wider actually help us clean the data and use um, functions that we've already talked about in this class. So uh, things that are important for cleaning your data. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about separate one more time, um, stringing, basically, <laughs> um, turning one column into, into multiple. And just a few things to note, uh, the reshape command exists <laughs> it is confusing okay so i want to show you something if i go to uh, ask it what is the documentation for reshape uh they i just scroll down a little bit um and it even says uh, that it's a little bit tricky and confusing in here. I'm not sure where it is in the text, but they even acknowledge that it's a tricky function. So I think if the creators are saying, by the way, this is hard to use, uh, it's probably not something we want to mess around with too much. Um, so just uh, a heads up there. Um, and you might see the old functions, gather and spread. Um, if you're looking up code or you're just Googling around for how to do certain things, uh, you know, beyond this class, you might see these functions. They're just the old names for these functions. They use um, their, their usage is a little bit different, but if you want to get any information about them, you can um, just type in the question mark. It tells you it's, oh, it's been superseded by, um, by the pivot longer function, but you can kind of see what the arguments are and all that good stuff. Um, for new code, we recommend switching to pivot longer. Okay. <laughs> they say it's easier to use, more featureful, um, and they're maintaining it. So probably better to go with what we're going to talk about today. All right. So let's get into the weeds. Let's talk about pivot longer. Okay. So we're reshaping data from wide to long. It's putting column data into rows. Um, and first we want to describe which columns we actually want to do the pivoting on. Okay. So we'll take a data set, our wide data, we'll pipe that in just like our other, um, our other tidyverse functions. We'll pipe that into pivot longer and we'll tell it, oh, I want the columns to be, um, you know, I can just say one column here, or I can give it a uh, combined vector of columns. So anything I want to use, I want to put into the pivot goes here. Um, and then, of course, I want to save that um, and reassign it to um, some other data set that I can use later. Okay, so quick example, if we've got wide data that looks a little bit similar to what we were working with before, uh, we've got vaccination rates uh, in columns and then just some ID for the row name doesn't uh, give us much information, but, you know, maybe this is for the whole US or something like that. Um, we'll take that wide data. We'll pipe that in to pivot longer. And in this case, I'm telling it, okay, well, I want the columns to be everything, right? Very nice uh, function to implement here just to select all the columns um, and uh, reassign that to long data. Okay, and so what does long data look like? Uh, you can see it's been converted to long form. These column names have become the name column and these values here have become the value column. Okay, and numbers are unchanged, just like I, I said before, the data is not different. Okay, so you may see um, or may have noticed here, it kind of assumed what I want these column names to be. So name and value, hmm, it's not super descriptive, right? And so 
I may want to specify what those names actually are, those new columns that I'm creating. And so, you know, I want to describe what columns we're pivoting longer, but I can also give it these additional arguments, uh, this names to, which will give a new name to the pivoted columns. So uh, back here, instead of, if I want something instead of name, I'll just say names to, and then whatever I want to use. And then values to, which gives a new name to the values that are going to be, uh, that were used to be in those columns, it's going to be the new column of values. So uh, in practice, you've got your columns that you want to pivot, you know, add a comma for another argument down here. And we'll say names to and state uh, just in quotes, whatever I want that new column name to be, it's going to contain the old column names. Values to um, it's a new column name and it's going to contain those cell values. Okay, and then reassigning um, just that's not changed and using the data set here not changed. Okay, so let's see uh, a slightly more complicated example. So again, I have my wide data I'm pivoting or taking that data set piping that into pivot longer. I'm still telling it that I want to use everything so calls is all of the columns. And then names to, I want to call that month and values to, I want to call that rate. Okay. Um, of course, you can pick more descriptive um, column names, but uh, that's just an example. And reassign that to long data. Um, and when we look at long data, you can see that we have some nice uh, custom column names here. Okay. So just being aware that you can change those and, and make them descriptive downstream because, you know, you, you um, may be using that in further steps and we don't want to forget what that column refers to because name and value, not super descriptive, um, but they're nice to have by default just in case you forget to specify names to or values to. All right, so let's do a little bit of work on an example so we'll use the circulator data um i don't know if we've talked about this quite yet um but just as a reminder um if we have that this is um for the city of baltimore different bus routes and um, we've got different lines so the orange line um, the purple line um, and then banner green and then uh, you see kind of these these two things are squished together here. So I have uh, boardings, um, alightings are getting off, and then the average. And so I think the, um, the um, motivation here is that boardings, alightings um, are kind of a little off. And somewhere in the average of the two will tell you about how many riders there are. Because, um, you know, it can be tricky when like tons of people get on the bus at once, you maybe get off by a few people or something. Um, so this will give us a kind of a good idea of what the actual ridership is. And so let's look at that data really quick. So um, I'm going to make a new markdown here. And... So I'll do my JGUR library, um, running that, and circ is read circulator, and we'll just look, uh, so it's being read in, and we'll look at the head of circ, okay? So again, have my different routes um, and whether it's a boarding, a lighting or average, right? And so this is a kind of a wide data set at this point. All right, so uh, like I said, it's a, um, a long, it, or uh, sorry, it's a wide-ish data set, um, but maybe we wanna condense those columns down to one and then have the contents of this table, right? All these numbers, maybe we want them in one column. 
So what we can do is take the CERC data set, pipe that in to pivot longer. And uh, this, one, this is a little tricky, selecting the columns. Um, we don't can't select everything because we have, you'll notice we have some columns that are day, uh, date, um, some other stuff here um, that we don't actually want to pivot. Okay, and then I think there's this like other column daily here. Okay, and so one thing we can do is use uh, tidy select, um, which we'll talk about just one second, um, to pick columns that start with a certain value. So uh, I can do starts with and then give it a vector. I want it to start with orange or start with purple or start with green. Um, or start with the banner because I can see that those routes all start or these columns all start with the type of, of route. So the purple line or the green line, for example. Okay. So let's see that in practice. So if I do long, assign that um, i'll take the circ data set pipe that in and um, would be good if i spell it right pipe that into pivot longer and i'm going to tell it uh, the calls is starts with right and this is from dplyr r this is a different package but that's totally okay um, it starts with orange starts with green starts with purple or starts with banner right and it doesn't matter what the order is here um, so i'll go ahead and run that and take a look at that data set okay so yeah i see everything except uh, the columns that didn't start with those values the day date daily um, have been stretched out into this name column. Okay, and now the values, all the numeric stuff here that was previously in the table is um, condensed within a, a nice um, individual column. All right, so I can do this a slightly different way. Um, many, many ways to select the columns we want. Um, if you're thinking about other ways other than using starts with, um, some kind of uh, something that's implying like a, a test or conditional in that way. Um, you can use this, um, you know, question tidy or tidy select to look at those selection options. So they can all go here and pivot longer. Um, and also remember that it's really useful to use the exclamation point to indicate uh, basically not. Right, so in here, I'm saying, oh, I want to pivot everything except day, date, and daily, okay? And you see that those haven't been pivoted here, okay? All right, so something I wanted to point out too is um, we had all of these columns before, right? And now, they are um, different categories of one particular column. And so if I go over here and say, okay, well, I want to do a, a count table of the different categories of name, you should see that they're all equal, right? Because they were all basically columns of the same length before, and now they're condensed into a single column. Um, but just this is a good gut check, right? Um, so those, um, those columns were all the same. So that makes sense. All right, so let's have have a little fun with this. So now that we've created this long form data, we'll use uh, string replace from the stringer package to put a space in the names. This is a little bit of review from last time. Um, but you know, let's say we want to do a little cleanup. It looks kind of um, ugly to have it. Um, the 
line and whether it's a boarding or a lighting and whatever it looks a little messy like that so let's stick a space in there let's replace anytime we see board let's replace it with underscore board okay and so if we want to do that we could just take uh, the mutate function we could take uh, the new name um, or the the new column is going to be name so it's replacing the former name and we'll use string replace on the name column and find any instance of board and replace it with underscore board and same thing just adding a comma doing the same thing for a light and same thing for average okay and again it's taking the name column and Essentially, this bit here is overwriting name and making it a uh, name once more. Okay. And uh, so the result of all of that is that we have this nice underscore here um, in this in the variables inside this name column. All right, and you may have uh, kind of guessed what's coming next, but uh, you know, we can actually use uh, separate and break these into two distinct columns. And so uh, now, uh, uh, let's see, um, each of these is boarding, a lighting, or average for different uh, bus routes. Um, but we'll use the separate function and use into to tell it, okay, well, what do I want those columns to be? and sep to say okay well where should the separation happen so what we can do is take the long data set that we uh we updated on the last slide pipe that into separate and say okay well i want to separate the name column i want to separate this one i want to separate the name column into new columns line and type and I want to separate it at that underscore. And uh, very exciting, we see the output is that these were split into two distinct columns, okay? And so that would have been a little harder to do if we hadn't pivoted longer first. All right, so now that we're here, let's talk about pivot wider. Okay, pivot wider is a little bit easier, right? So we're not actually specifying any columns or doing anything like that. Um, but again, we're spreading row data into columns and we'll have to tell it two arguments. We'll have to tell it names from, which is the old column whose contents are somewhat categorical and they can be spread into multiple new column names. And then the values, which are those numeric or, you know, something um, had that have some data in it that can fill those new columns that you're creating. And so that'll look like this. It's taking the long data, piping that in to pivot wider and giving it names from. So what's the old column name? It's going to contain the new column names. They're becoming columns and the values. So what's this old column name that's gonna contain the new cell values? Okay, and so let's see that in practice. Okay, so going back to our vaccination toy example, uh, we have long data that looks something like this, and we just have to tell it, oh, okay, um, I wanna take the long data, I wanna pivot wider, and uh, I want those names from the month column, right? Something categorical, it's got a limited number of values. And I want those cell values to come from rate, right? This is numeric or, you know, it's got a little bit more detail to it. Um, and then reassign that. And uh, yeah, you can see I'm kind of back where I started, right? So those are now column names and the values populate the cells. All right, so using this uh, data set we were just working on, the circulator data set, 
Uh, just a reminder that the long data has this line and type column, and then it has a column for value. All right, and so let's say I want to pivot that wider to make it a little easier for me to look at. Um, I can take the long data set, pipe that into pivot wider and say, OK, well, I want the names of the new columns to come from the type column. And I want to populate those new columns with the value column. OK, and so let's look back and forth to see kind of what's happening. Here's the type column. Here are the values. And you see now it's been stretched nice and wide and uh, it's a little bit easier to look at, right? I have the line color on the left hand side and the boarding or a lighting on the right uh, kind of stretched out. All right, so we talked about a lot of fun stuff. Uh, the tidier package helps us convert between wide and long theta. There's two functions that you're really going to be using for this, um, although they're tricky and you have to do think about like what uh, what you're actually doing on your data and, and be mindful in your choices. Um, so the pivot longer function goes from wide form to long form. You specify the columns you want to pivot and you can give it the arguments names to and values to for custom naming, right? If you don't want it to just be name and value, not super descriptive. Um, and uh, pivot wider goes from long form to wide form. Um, and you do have to specify what do I want the names to come from for my new columns. And what do I want the values of those columns to be? All right, welcome back everybody. Um, so I wanted to bring up uh, something really quickly that someone uh, noticed um, in their code. Um, and so this first chunk where I'm reading in the data, if I look at the call names, uh, do you see how it's, you know, the, there are spaces, like it looks okay, um, kind of reading it in how I expect. Um, if I just make a teeny typo here and use the base r read dot csv function, and I try to do the same thing, do you see how it's kind of putting periods in the spaces? It's just formatting these columns super weird, okay? And so that can cause a lot of problems downstream, you know, if I'm trying to rename columns, if I'm trying to do stuff. Um, so this is an easy trap to fall into. Um, and so uh, something you may run into, so just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, that's something that came up uh, for us in the last lab. All right, uh, so next up is uh, joining, so merging, joining data sets together, usually on some kind of key variable. You might have two different data sets that have uh, patient names or IDs and you want to kind of merge different uh, vital signs or something like that. Um, and so you can use the question mark join to see different types of joining. Uh, these functions will come from the dplyr package. So again, this is loaded with tidyverse. We're using these packages for a lot of different things. Um, so key types of joins we have. Uh, so let's say we have two different data sets, X and Y. Uh, inner join, um, and you may be already familiar with this from other languages and things like that, but only rows that match for X and Y are kept. It's the union of the two, right? Or the, the overlap of the two. Uh, a full join of X and Y keeps all rows of both X and Y. Left join keeps all rows of X, even if they're not found in Y. So everything from X and any overlap in Y. And right join does uh, basically the opposite. So all rows of Y, even if they're not found in X and just the overlap with X is kept. Um, and then sometimes uh, you might find a use for anti-join. Maybe you're looking for uh, basically like patients who don't have the vital signs from the other data set and you just want to keep those. Um, so all rows from X not in Y 
uh, keeping just columns from X. So you may find that you need that at some point, but we'll not talk too much about it. Okay, so let's uh, merge some simple data. So let's say we have uh, this data set for a couple states that start with A. Um, so we looked at this a little bit earlier. We have Alabama and Alaska and some vaccination rates for June and May. Um, and then we have some cold states. <laughs> so Maine and Alaska, and then uh, some vaccination uh, rate here. So what happens if we do an inner join? We're just keeping those indexes that are shared between the two data sets. And so again, with our uh, GIFs here, I think it's easier to kind of visualize it. Um, all right, so if we do inner join of that, those A states and the cold states, it's, you know, it's saying, okay, I'm, I'm joining and um, I'm gonna join by state, okay? And so it's only keeping Alaska because if we go back, we see Alaska is the only one in both data sets, right? So it's not keeping anything that's not found in both, okay? And by default, uh, joining by state because that's a column that is shared between the data sets. Okay. Left join keeps everything on X side. You see the one, two, and three are kept. Um, and it's keeping one and two because they're found in Y, uh, but it's not keeping the unique index to, to Y here, the, the four index. So if I do this exact same thing with a left join, it'll keep anything in the data A's data set. So it'll keep Alabama. And importantly, even though Alabama is not found in the cold data set, um, it'll still populate that column, but it'll just put an NA there. It's like, oh, okay, that data was missing um, from that column. And again, joining by state. All right, so um, one thing that can be really handy for keeping track of your uh, your joins is this package called tidy log and it's useful for just logging outputs giving you a little bit more detail on your joins and so if we do the exact same thing we just did we, we load tidy log um, and we do a left join of data a is to data cold it's saying all right we're joining by state it's saying left join I added one column Okay, this April vaccination rate from data cold. And okay, there was row, some, some rows that were only in X. That first one, I got one. Rows that were only in Y, there was one. And matched rows is one. Um, okay, so how do we interpret this? So anything that's not in parentheses gets added to the total number of rows, but in parentheses, it's saying, oh, well, you matched a row in Y, but we don't want that. We're going to throw it away because we're doing the left join. We only want to keep stuff on the left hand side of the join. OK, so it's just giving us a little bit more detail. OK, so right joins what it sounds like it's keeping everything on the right hand side um, and getting rid of anything that's only found on the left okay and because i have tidy log loaded it gives me a little bit more detailed output uh, this time there's some rows that are only in x that i'm going to ignore okay there's rows that are only in Y I'm going to keep, and there's a matched row I'm going to keep. Uh, and that should give me two total rows. And you look down here, and uh, voila, I have Alaska, which was uh, matched between the two data sets, and then Maine, which was in the right-hand data set. But you can see that now I have some NAs here. Okay. 
Okay, and you may be wondering, it's like, why do we even bother with right join? I could just do left join and switch the two data sets. Um, and you're right, it basically does the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that our columns are going to be slightly different ordered. Okay, so if I do this, you'll see that uh, June and May are here. Um, it by default takes the columns from the first left hand data set first and then the right hand data set. But you'll see that the data is the exact same here, uh, but the columns are reordered. Okay, so whatever makes the most sense to you, um, you know, perhaps you put the data set first that has the most important columns um, or something that's up to you. All right, full join, perhaps the most uh, easy to understand. We're just keeping everything, right? And anything that is not shared, we're going to fill it up with NAs. So let's do full join for data A's and data cold. There's a couple rows that are only found in each data set. There's one matched row, so we should have a total of three. Um, and so as before, we have Alaska, which matches both data sets. Um, but we have to fill in some NAs for those that are only found in X, OR, and Y. Okay, so you may get a message in um, your tidy log that says includes duplicates. And this isn't always something to be worried about. It can cause some problems, but just want you to be aware of what that means. And so let's take two data sets here and we'll, um, we'll kind of show what that looks like. Um, so the first we've got uh, some states and their state bird. And now we have some states and vaccination rate by month. And you'll notice that Alaska is on here twice. Okay. So that's kind of important. Okay. And let's do a left join and we get this message that it includes duplicates. Um, so what does that mean? Okay, so this means that data, including the join and column state, has been duplicated. Um, and so as, as I'm merging these two data sets, you'll notice that uh, Alaska and Willow Ptarmigan have been duplicated, right? That's not necessarily a problem, but you know, if I wanted to count up the, the observations or the, the N, you know, the number of rows for state bird that might be a little misleading for me, you know, so just something to be aware of that this can happen and uh, um, it's not always a bad thing, um, usually not a bad thing, but just to be mindful of it that data is sometimes duplicated as you are merging your data sets. Okay, and so this is just an example of um, what that could look like, right? So two appears twice on the right, and then it has to get duplicated to, to match up with those. Okay. All right, so maybe um, tidy logs getting a little bit annoying. You wanna stop getting all these uh, messages when you do joins, you can use unload namespace a tidy log to do that uh, in case it's annoying you. <laughs> it does give you a lot of detail. Okay, um, so the duplicated, just like we were talking about, uh, function can give you indications if they're duplicates in a vector. Um, and so um, duplicated of one through five, um, I'll just show you kind of what that looks like. Okay, um, and so it's false, it's just one through five, right? It's not, um, you know, the numbers are not repeated, but let's say um, I have a vector that looks a little bit like this. 
right? One, two, three, four, five, one, right? So one is obviously repeated there. Um, and if I do duplicated um, this last number one uh, is, uh, is a duplicate of, of the vector. And so it's going to tell me um, on the first duplicate, so not the, not, or sorry, the second uh, occurrence of some number or some value. Um, so you'll notice that this uh, first occurrence of one is fine, right? But only on the second occurrence do you get kind of an alert. Um, and so you can add a column if you're interested in looking for duplicated values. So you can say, all right, I want that joined data set. I want to pipe that into mutate. And I want to create a new column that is a duplicated state. Um, and then all I have to do is duplicated and then this, the, the column I'm interested in. OK, and so it's telling me, OK, I haven't seen Alabama before. That's fine. I haven't seen Alaska before. But oh, I have seen Alaska before on this other one or this this last one. So can come in handy sometimes. All right, so um, the by argument super useful. Um, so by default joins use the intersection of column names. If by is specified, it just uses that. So I can tell it, okay, I want to merge these two, join these two data sets by uh, some column called state. Um, if you have a lot of columns in common, it's going to try to use all of them, okay? Um, and then this by uh, argument will be helpful in case our columns have different names. Okay. Um, you can also use something like by equals um, a combined list with two different names. So let's say we had something like state uppercase and state lowercase. They, we know they mean the same thing to us, um, but we need to tell our and the, the join function, we need to tell it that those columns are the same. Okay. So again, by is equal to combine uh, of the two different column names. Okay, and we're, we're almost through this. Um, and we might wanna determine what indexes or, or uh, attributes are in the first data set that aren't in the second data set. So, Remember, we have our data A's, Alabama and Alaska, um, and our data called Maine and Alaska. And so we're going to need to use pull for set diff because it's looking at what, um, what's the difference between two vectors. And anytime, I know we, the vectors versus data frames is a little bit tricky, but anytime it's a function that works with vectors, we're going to need to use the pull from the column that we're interested in. And so let's go ahead and take data A's and pull out the states. And that would give us A states, um, some vector here. Um, and actually, let me run this because um, I think it's uh, useful to look at. OK, um, so. I've got uh, A states, Alabama and Alaska, and you'll notice this is not a data frame anymore, it's a tibble, it's a vector, and I've got uh, cold states. Okay, so these are vectors, and I want to compare the set difference between them. So if I want to say, okay, well, I want to know what is in A states that's not in cold states. It's Alabama, okay? And if actually, oh, I actually want to know what's in cold states that's not in A states. 
it's telling me uh, main is not is in cold states, but it's not a states. Okay, so that can be useful for kind of figuring out where it is you don't have overlap um, and it's kind of similar to an anti join in some ways. All right, so let's summarize here. Um, merging joining data sets together are assumes all column names uh, that overlap, but you can use the by argument to specify, or you can use uh, the combine to give it a couple different uh, names and, and indicate that they're the same. Inner join is keeping only rows that match for X and Y. Full join keeps everything. Left join keeps everything on the left, but not with Y, just keeps the things that match. And then right joins kind of the opposite, keeps everything in Y, but only the matches in X. Uh, you can use the tidy log package for a detailed summary. I think it's really great as you're kind of getting started on this stuff. And then finally, set diff can show you what in X is missing from Y, but importantly, these need to be vectors, right? So you need to do the pull function before you in, get, kind of get into it and get looking at that. All right, so that's it for manipulating data. I think that's the end here. Um, but we'll go back to the lab and do a little practice on this before moving on to the next thing.